tracker on that one. This is to the east at about 35 miles an hour. So it'll arrive over in Winchendon in about 506. So about another 13 minutes or so that we'll be keeping an eye on it. Again, uh, the, the forward tracking on this storm is what we're keeping an eye on. But remember, the whole area here that we're talking about is a severe thunderstorm, which means there's some very gusty winds, maybe not focused right around where the tornado warning is, but strong winds. We've also got some hail and torrential downpours. In a very brief period of time, you can get some tremendous rainfalls to go. So if you're traveling even, say, Along Route 2, you want to be really cautious about that suddenly getting a downpour and, of course, hydroplaning very, very easily. So the tracking on this puts it into Winchendon about 5.06. So we've got another about 12 to 15 minutes or so before it would make its way over towards Winchendon and then continue to march its way eastward. Uh, again, uh, the warning in effect until 5.30 tonight. This is where we have it right now. Now, we're going to actually kind of play with this just a little bit and look inside the cell just a bit. Take a look at what we call uh, some of our velocities and see where the winds are moving within this one and to see what we call a couplet. In other words, we've got winds going toward the radar and winds going away from the radar. And when you get that kind of motion going on, that's when you tend to find that there perhaps is some circulation going on there. The National Weather Service took a look at that and they said, you know what, there's some circulation going on and that's why this has been switched to a yeah, tornado warning. Okay, we're not going to look at the velocity right at the moment, but I did want to see if we could possibly look outside because I want you to see the view from Boston as you look off toward the west. See that clouds on the horizon? That's what you're looking at right now, out towards Fitchburg, into those areas there. That's the region that we're looking at for the thunderstorms to be coming in here. So we're going to take a look at what's happening on radar. We're going to go back to weather one, show you what's happening right there. And I want to take a look at what we call our velocity. And this is going to give us an idea of what's going on inside of it. Not really seeing too much right now on the velocity scans, but certainly we're going to be keeping a close eye on that one as we continue to look at it. Uh, Kellyanne, you're looking at some things over there. What have you got? Yeah, so we're having a hard time pulling up the velocity data. So what I'm looking at right now, if we pull over to weather two, uh, we have some shear tracks that we're looking at. And this is an indication of wind that is rotating. Um, so it's basically what we call shear track because you can see the wind is different at directions at different heights of the atmosphere. So if you look closely here, you see that little blip of blue. I'm actually going to try to get my highlighter so you can actually see what I'm pointing at here. Um, that little spot right there indicating that there is a bit of shear that's being picked up with this particular cell as it's making its way eastward just north of Route 2. You can see some of that also just north of Winchenden. So this is likely what the National Weather Service was looking at as well as we're watching this particular cell. And I want to take you back to that cell as we watch it on the radar right now, making its way eastward pretty quickly too. This is moving east at about 35 miles per hour. So that's why you definitely need to take shelter if you're within this box area. And I'm going to take you in so you can see some of the towns that we're watching in particular. So we've mentioned uh, Winchington, but also Gardner. Um, that's a spot you'll want to watch for. We're also seeing these moving eastward rather quickly. So even in the Fitchburg area, even though you're not within the warning, I would get prepared for this likelihood of a tornado moving toward your area. And I know, Mike Wonkum, you're watching this very closely, too. Looks like you have the velocity data up. Yeah, we're taking a look at the velocity data. Now, velocity data is very interesting. What we're actually doing is we're looking inside the thunderstorm. We're looking to see which way the raindrops are moving. And if you see a bunch of raindrops going this way, and you see a bunch of raindrops going this way, then in between is where you can get some swirling going on. And that's what we look at inside. We sometimes call it a couplet. If you've ever been picked up for speeding. You're very familiar with Doppler radar. It's judging how fast your car is going toward it. So what we're looking at right now we're looking at the swirling motion. Now, notice how we've got a bunch of colors that are going different directions and other directions. So we've got radar is showing us velocities going this way and this way. So right in here is where we're looking at some swirling going on. That's the reason the tornado warning was issued. That's because of the velocity. Now, based on where this is at, we're going to continue to watch it move its way just south of Winchenden over towards Ashburnham. And these are the areas that are in that tornado warning. Now, this entire area is in a severe thunderstorm warning, but the area in red that you see right here, that is what we call our tornado warning. It goes until 5.30 tonight. We're going to watch this to see how it behaves. If it starts to show maybe all the colors going to one direction, as opposed to the different colors that you see right now, that would indicate to us that it's sort of weakening somewhat and losing some of its push. Now, if we take a look at that area where we're seeing that velocity going on and we track it out, here's where it's at right now. You can see the dishes that we're looking at. We'll put it over towards uh, Baldwinville at about 5.48, right around 5 o'clock. Now, a couple things to remember about tornadoes and tornado warnings when we issue these things. What do you do? We don't get that many in New England. This is not like the Midwest where they get them all the time. But here are some things that you want to keep in mind. First off, you want to go to the lowest level center of the house. You want to get as many layers between you and the outside as possible. Obviously, windows are not a place you want to be. If you're in a car or a mobile home, 
he should be getting out of it and moving away to some safer shelter, especially if you've got an opportunity to get out of that and move away. And if you're outside, get into a low spot. Remember, tornadoes like to kind of skip across the ground many times. So if you're in a low ditch or sometimes, it can actually skip across. The reason we say get out of a mobile home, the idea of a mobile home is it's easy to move. And if you can move that easily with a truck, obviously with winds that could be 70 miles an hour or even stronger if we start getting into the EFL scale of tornadoes, then we'd have to be worried about that. So here's the warning that we have right now. You can see kind of the Winchenden area Ashburnham, I'm concerned about. This is the area we're looking at right now that we've been seeing with that uh, severe thunderstorm going that showed indications that there perhaps was some rotation within it. We've not had official confirmation. There's nothing on the ground that says, hey, we're looking at a tornado right now. But there is confirmation based on what we're looking at a radar. And that's what we look at with that velocity going on. So look at these very dark colors that you're seeing right there. Those dark colors indicating to me that it's really got a core to it, a very strong area here just south of Royalston. You're approaching 202 at this point. But even out ahead of it, you're in Ashby, and you're seeing some very heavy downpours going on right now, perhaps some gusty winds, and so certainly a lot of lightning with this thing. And if you travel back farther in here to the core of where we've been looking at with that tornado, that's why I'm concerned about that. Again, the tracking on this is moving to the east at about 35 miles an hour. So this is the area that's most indicative to us. I have seen, just it seems like in the last couple of moments, kind of it losing some of its punch. It was much more purplish in this color and concentrated a few moments ago. We'll take a velocity scan in a moment to take a look and see what's happening there. So if you track this out and you head towards Ashburnham and to Fitchburg, here's the timing on it. Roughly over the next half hour or so is that region that we'll be looking at. So that's why this tornado warning is there. Interesting. This is very interesting. If you look at this velocity scan, I'm not seeing the colors as vibrant as they were a few moments ago. So we're going to wait to see, get a couple more scans on this to see if that is an indication that perhaps we're losing some of that circulation in here. So we're looking at a lot of rotation right now that was going in here a few moments ago as this wind kind of lifts away from the radar. And remember, what we're tracking here are the individual raindrops going on. So if we see a bunch of raindrops going this way and a bunch of raindrops going that way, that's where you look for that swirl to happen. So as these colors become, say, less defined or maybe more go to the green color, colors indicating everything is going toward the radar. That would give us some indication. But I am watching this little area here towards Winchester. Look, we're starting to see a little bit something there. We're going to keep an eye on that one. So this entire area is in a tornado warning until 5.30 tonight. This will be the area that we'll continue to track. There you see the strongest cell right now. But boy, I tell you, this one is looking very strong all the time. Not tornadic, but it's certainly looking like a very powerful one. And AJ, can we back off a little bit and just kind of see? Orange just got to Orange just gusted to 58 miles an hour. So we have a very large area we're talking about. In fact, maybe let's switch over to Kellyanne. Uh, Kellyanne Chickalese, meteorologist Kellyanne Chickalese, is looking at more the big picture of what's going on. And this is a tremendous line. We're focused on that tornado right now. But while we're focusing on that, sometimes you have to keep an eye on what's going on around it as well. Yes, because these cells are populating very quickly, Mike. And one thing that you were noting is that the lightning has populated very quickly as well. We're seeing over 200 strikes of lightning just within this particular line. And these are moving east at about 30 to 35 miles per hour. So, of course, we're keeping an eye on the track because we want to know who's next in this line, who needs to take cover. So, it's not just the warned area. These cells are holding their strength as they're moving eastward. So, as we progress for the next hour, here's an estimation of where they'll likely move toward. Uh, Lowell area, likely around 518, moving toward Worcester. You can see with that cell that's stretching down toward West Brookfield, you'll likely get in on that cell as we move toward about 607. Cambridge, and even moving toward Boston, right around around 6.30 this evening. So these are packing a punch. And I do want to take a look at the velocity so you could take a look at just how strong we're seeing that circulation on the radar. And right now, we still are seeing some indication of rotation as we move just south of the Winchenden area. So uh, in particular, Baldwinville, that's the spot to watch moving eastward. This does include Ashburn Ham. However, I want to mention moving out toward Fitchburg, there is likely going to be some indication of rotation as well. Over 200 strikes of lightning just within the storm cell that is moving eastward. And one thing that has me incredibly concerned, we have people traveling at this time. We have heavy rainfall that makes it incredibly difficult to spot this rotation, to spot a tornado. Right now, the latest indication on the radar is that we're seeing rainfall rates over two to three inches per hour. So that's a heavy torrential downpour that makes it impossible for first off just trying to travel, but trying to spot a tornado as it's moving toward your area. So okay. at this point, you're in with the warned area. If you're just east of the warned area, please 
please take shelter. And as Mike was mentioning, that means uh, getting into a basement or getting into the center of your home away from windows. A lot to watch here, Mike. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, we want to show you some pictures now. This is from Fitchburg right now. And you're looking off. What's interesting about it is that many times you can actually see the sun in the distance. So we're looking at Fitchburg here. Uh, right now, nothing much going on there. But we're watching this a tremendous line that is out there at this point. Everyone is pretty much in a severe thunderstorm watch at this point. So as we look at weather one, you'll notice that we're dealing with a lot of areas where there's a lot of potential for severe weather that we have been dealing with. So this is the area we're talking about as until 10 o'clock tonight. It does not include the Cape and the islands, but we're focused on this one area, this, this tornado possibly that's in northern Worcester County. But this whole line is very, very active at this point. These are all the severe thunderstorm watches and warnings that we're talking about. The yellow areas you see right now are severe thunderstorm warnings. Those large boxes I showed you, those are the watches. The difference being a watch means we keep an eye on the weather. A warning means we've spotted something that's severe out there. So now what we're looking at is this one area right here. This is where we have the tornado warning going on as it marches its way east at about 35 miles an hour. Now if it could hold together, and I doubt very much that it would because the nature of these, they kind of pulse up. They sort of build, fall apart, and then new ones develop in their place. But you can see that if we put it on there at about 35 miles an hour, it would be arriving in the Boston area around 6.30 tonight, which is what we expected this line to do, and it will continue to march that way. Now, I'm going to switch over to weather four at this point so we can take a little bit better look at what's going on inside that particular cell that we're tracking now into Worcester County. Tremendous light, amount of lightning that's going on out there. Very, very cautious about that. Many times it's an underrated killer when we talk about these storms of lightning. If you hear thunder, it's time to go indoors at that point. But here's the area that we're talking about. There's the tracking that we've put onto this as we push it way towards Ashburnham at about 5.09. So about another nine minutes or so before it gets into that area, if it can hold together. We'll watch this area. Now let's go over to velocity because I want to see what's going on inside here. Remember we were talking about those colors, where the two colors are kind of competing against each other? It really indicates to us where there may be some rotation taking place. Still seeing some of that. Still seeing some of the red indicating uh, winds going this direction and still seeing some greens indicating winds going this direction. So this is the area that we're watching right now. Uh, I, and as you see, it's just off to the west of Ashburn Ham. Uh, if you're in Ashburn Ham right now, you are no doubt seeing some very dark, menacing clouds, probably hearing a lot of lightning and thunder at this point. And certainly you'll want to make sure that you're ready and prepared for this because this tornado warning goes until 530 tonight. You'll notice this area off here to the west, as we look farther to the west, is that actually it's kind of showing some signs of weakening a little bit, but that warning box will stay out for most of Worcester County until 5.30 tonight. So it's another half hour or so that we're looking at. Look at all that lightning that we're talking about there. And it really, I want to emphasize that a lot because there's so many things, so many, it was such a hot day today. People were outside. I mean, we hit 100 degrees in Boston today. People are outside. Maybe they're trying to cool off. They're not near a television to find out what's going on with these severe thunderstorms. Let them know that, hey, there's a tornado out here to the West, or at least indicated on radar anyway, and there's some severe thunderstorms headed this way. So as this line marches its way to the east about 35 miles an hour, it'll be arriving in Boston probably around 6.30 or so. Uh, it'll take a little while to get there, but you can see the line that we're talking about. And also we have, look at this, we have even now a new severe thunderstorm warning now just north of Amesbury sitting along the coast. We have this area that we're talking about, put a little tracker onto this one to give you an idea of how fast it's going to be getting over towards Atkinson by about 5.30 tonight. This is the area that's strong, but I really, look at these areas that you're just seeing off here to the west, towards Athol, through uh, Winchenden, and going out into Western Mass as well, all the way out through the Berkshires. That's where this was at originally. By the way, in the Berkshires, the temperatures went from upper 90s, like most of us have been today, dropping down into the 70s. So it drops down tremendously. So here's a, we'll put a tracker on at about 36 miles an hour. This is that line that you see. So in Fitchburg here in just a few moments, I showed you the picture from Fitchburg a few moments ago, and we were looking at blue sky. We're going to keep an eye on that one because I have a feeling that sky is going to get very ominous looking, very dark. Uh, there's actually one of the things that we watch as well when we're out there watching these storms is that sometimes the clouds will have a little bit of a green tint to them, an indication that perhaps there's some hail with it. And there certainly is the possibility of hail with this one and the strong winds as well. Again, there's the line that we're looking at right now. There's that picture from Fitchburg right now. And uh, again, you're still seeing some blue sky around, but it also depends on which way we're pointing the camera just to see where everything's at. So this is the area we're watching, the impact obviously into this region here. That's the strongest one we're looking at. That's the cell indicated on radar that perhaps there was a tornado there. And uh, based on radar, remember it's based on radar. 
We have several ways that we watch for tornadoes. One is an observer on the ground actually looking at it and spotting it and calling in and saying, hey, I can see a funnel cloud on the ground. A funnel cloud, by the way, is a funnel cloud as long as it's off the ground. Once the funnel cloud touches the ground, technically it becomes a tornado at that point. But what we're doing is we're taking a radar and we're shooting it into the clouds. And so we're looking up inside the cloud at this point. We're seeing a bunch of raindrops this way and a bunch of raindrops that way. And then you get that swirl and this is it. Now, if you were watching a few moments ago, you saw some very vivid purple colors and some lighter greens. Now look at what's happened just in the last scan. Notice how the vivid purples have diminished. That to me tells me that we're losing some of that velocity inside that storm at this point. Again, you don't want to cancel a tornado warning too quickly, but I am watching that and saying, hmm, there does seem to be some indications that perhaps perhaps it's losing some of that tornadic circulation that we were looking at. However, what we're looking at here this is what we call a bow echo. And if that is holding together, that means in this line right through here, you're gonna have a tremendous amount of wind. Perhaps in this case, as much as 70 miles an hour. So a very strong wind that'll be pushing its way into Ashburnham. Really be cautious about that. We're picking up obviously a lot of lightning with it. I haven't had any reports of hail yet, but I would not be surprised if we're probably picking up a little bit of that. Even though it's warm out there, in fact, it's incredibly hot today, it's very, very cold aloft. And you get those chunks of ice to form fall to the ground, and they can obviously cause a lot of damage depending on the exact size of it. So here is the line that we're having, the leading edge of it. We're tracking it now at about 35 miles an hour off to the east, so that would put into Fitchburg about 518. So although you were looking at blue skies, in about 15 minutes or so, I think you're going to be seeing some pretty strong thunderstorms coming through. If it can hold together, it'll be over to Pepperell, about 528. And again, we're looking at moving even closer towards Ashburnham here, just in about another three or four minutes. So that's where the strongest cell is right now. So from Winchenden up through Ringe, by the way, this is the second time Ringe has gotten it because Ringe actually had this one a little bit earlier and now has this one going through. We're not seeing anything really over toward the eastern part of the state just yet, but it certainly is something we're going to be watching as that line marches its way eastward. Let's take a little bit wider view of what's going on, see what's happening out there, and you'll notice that this line extends really all the way. It started up in the Lakes region earlier today. We had tornado and, or excuse me, severe thunderstorm warnings up there, but it goes all the way from Portland. You've got this cell, which is kind of broken out ahead of it. Uh, and this is an interesting one that we're seeing just across the border. Uh, this one I'm concerned about because of the heat that we had going on today and everyone going to the beach. That's a very big beach area that we're talking about there in coastal New Hampshire. And we've got a strong thunderstorm which is marching through. And that one also has a severe thunderstorm warning with it right now. Uh, focus in on that one right now and you'll see what's happening. There it is. See how it's just now moving its way toward the beach. And so you, uh, I'm hoping everyone is evacuated pretty quickly from that area. But look how rapidly that is moving through there. And notice how I'm starting to see some purple colors indicating to me that this is actually getting stronger, not weakening. A lot of times when storms get closer to the ocean, they start to draw in some of that cool, more stable air, and they sort of fall apart. Not in this case. This one's actually looking stronger. And of course, we had temperatures today of 100 degrees in Boston. So the heat and humidity are out there, and now we watch these storms just fuel on that. You see, that's what they, they feed on. They feed on that heat and humidity of the day. Now, the peak heating of the day happens usually around 2 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So something in our favor is the fact that we're getting past that peak heating of the day. So they should tend to weaken a little bit as we head towards sunset. But there's so much instability out there, it's overcoming that. So that's why you're seeing this line going through. So we still have this tornado warning, which is out there. Uh, let me double check on that tornado warning to see if it still is into effect out there at this moment, uh, because we may actually be starting to get some indications that it may be uh, changing its shape just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to switch over to weather one for just a moment. Actually, I'm going to go over to meteorologist Kellyanne Chickalese. You're kind of keeping an eye on it right this point too. Uh, what, what is the latest on that tornado warning? There? Yeah, so it is still in effect. It looked like they might have trimmed it on the west side of the warning, but it is still in effect moving eastward. So at this point, it's in effect until 5.30 this evening. And at this point, it is just radar indicating we're not seeing anything on the ground as of yet. No ground truth to this likelihood of a tornado, but it is a likelihood based on what the radar is showing. And the amount of lightning is incredible, showing the strength of this storm line as it's pushing through. And I say storm line because you can see how the cells are starting to merge, taking on a line-like formation. And with that said, that is why we are so concerned for not only the tornadic uh, component to this storm threat for tonight, but also the potential for straight line wind damage as well. So this is going to be a very active evening for us.
us. This is moving east at about 30 miles per hour. So keep a close eye on that track. And I really want to emphasize that even if you're not in the warning, if you're within an area along and north of the pike right now, you are seeing that chance of severe thunderstorms pushing toward you. And that includes a good chunk of our area, including places like Lowell moving out toward Lawrence and even moving out toward Cambridge and Boston. This threat continues through tonight, although this particular track suggests that in the Cambridge area, we could see these particular severe thunderstorms rolling in right around 630. So let's take you in into the look at the radar and you can see just how notchy the radar looks. It's not that um, nice, well-formed uh, cell. It's a very notchy appearance and that's very... Um, risky and very indica uh, indicative of a severe thunderstorm, but also a pot potential for tornado. So that is why we're watching the velocity. Right now, the couplet, as Mike has been mentioning, not looking quite as well formed as it was earlier in the hour. However, there's still some indication here as we take a zoom in where we're seeing some darker greens and lighter greens. So that's indicating where we're seeing some sort of rotation still near the radar site. The risk is still there for some weak rotation. And it's not just that. This is a very long line that's stretching through. And all this bright green that you're seeing on the radar from areas like New Ipswich and moving into southern New Hampshire, stretching all the way down toward um, areas of southern Worcester County, we're actually seeing wind gust potential closer to 30 to 40 miles per hour, and we're seeing some indications, some uh, storm reports coming in where we're seeing wind gusts over 50 miles per hour. Hail is also concerned right now. Some of the hail tracks indicating uh, hail size over an inch. When you see that kind of hail size, Mike, you know that this is a strong thunderstorm with a lot of height and a lot of capability of strong rotation. So that is not something Thing you want to see when we're talking about that tornado potential that right, right. is I, still a concern. I remember I remember years ago uh, talking with some of the trained spotters who had been out years and years, and they said whenever you were in heavy hail, that was the point of the storm where you're really at the most intensity, and that's when they got most nervous about it, seeing any kind of rotation going on. Now I want to show you something here. There's kind of a little notch that's right through here. This kind of just give you some where you're at. This is Ashburnham right now, but this little notch right through here, this is where we may be actually starting to see a little bit of rotation coming through. Now remember, because of the radar and the distance we're talking about, we're scanning up inside this thunderstorm quite a ways. So many times you can get the rotation going on up here, but it has not made it to the ground. And it may take a while for that to actually reach its way all the way to the ground, or it may never actually even get to the ground. So that's why we watch to see what's happening. So although I'm not very impressed with this velocity scan right at this moment, you know, we're seeing a little bit of red here, a little bit of green right here. A, a few moments ago, I saw a lot of red. But remember, we're dealing with it way up inside the cloud. So any little difference that we see right there. So, for example, we're seeing the winds moving at about 54 miles an hour into this direction. And at the same time, we're seeing winds probably moving at a good 35 to 40 miles an hour in this direction. And that difference is where we start to see that spin going on. So in Ashburnham, up towards Lane Village is what we're talking about that I'm really most concerned about with it. But I'd also be keeping a very close eye on even as you head over towards Townsend. Now, in Townsend, look at this. We have a thunderstorm going on. There's a gap in between, and then you get the one that's produced this tornado warning. Now, the tornado warning is trimmed back. I remember I showed you that a few moments ago, and I thought it had been changed a little bit. They've actually lopped off the back half of it because it's already passed through there, so we're not looking at it too much. Now, as I take a look at the velocity scan across the area, there are some indications where we're seeing perhaps, you know, some difference in colors right there. Nothing real organized like we saw a few moments ago, but certainly something we'll keep an eye on. Now, this is, we're at 510 right now. This warning that you see out here goes until 530 tonight. But at that time, it's going to be moving its way eastward at about 35 miles an hour. So here you see Hollis. Uh, we're seeing some very heavy downpours just across the border. Townsend, you've got a good thunderstorm just north of the city. Same with Pepperell, just to the north of the city, right up there kind of on the border. It's running right along the Mass, New Hampshire border at this point. Look at that cell right through there, just north of, uh, of Townsman. Uh, that's got, it's a very strong potential with it. As Kellyanne was pointing out to you, there probably some large hail with that one based on radar, perhaps as much as an inch in diameter. That can cause a lot of damage. So we'll be hearing about that if that hail can make it all the way to the ground. But if you look along this line, and we go out here toward the west. This is where the tornado warning is, just a little bit farther off to our west. And we'll kind of slide this over so you can take a better look at what's happening as it marches its way through. Now, the leading edge of it is the area where we're most concerned with. And this little notch right here, that's what I'm really watching is right through here that we may have a little bit of rotation. Now, interesting enough, as we look at the next scan coming through, we're starting to see less and less of that difference in color going on. But certainly something that I'm still keeping a very close eye on. Here is the tornado warning that we're talking about. It goes until 530. But frankly, at this pace, either they're going to allow that warning to expire or it is going to pass out of that warning box very, very shortly. So um, we're going to do... 
tornado warning, okay, they are going to be canceling it. Obviously, we've been talking about that. The colors that were indicated, uh, look, it just went away. So the National Weather Service at this point has canceled that tornado warning, which was originally going to go into 5.30 tonight. They have now canceled it. We are still watching some very strong storms. We'll keep you posted on what's going on. AJ? Yeah, Mike, uh, just something of interest here, too. Mm-hmm. I know they just, uh, they, they're they canceling the, the uh, tornado warning right now, but I do want to point out this area right in here. You were talking about that notch yep. just a little while ago, uh, just on the north side of Ashburnham here. Just because the tornado warning has been lifted right now does not mean that we're not dealing with some pretty uh, strong damage potential from strong winds. So I'm oh, just going to I'm yeah. just going to do something here. We'll uh, we can actually uh, query. Uh, what the radar is telling us, like mm-hmm. right in here, for example. And we see a wind uh, estimated by Doppler radar of uh, 54 miles per hour. Right. Uh, so it's entirely possible that this storm is, while maybe not necessarily producing a tornado, straight line wind damage can also cause a lot of wind damage. So around Ashburnham right now, uh, more than likely uh, experiencing at least some uh, very gusty winds, if not damaging winds across that area. And AJ, let's take a wider picture and show reflectivity and really show that line, because that line, that fr- look at that. I mean, it's not quite what we call called classic bow echo, but it's certainly got the potential that that leading edge could have some very, yeah, very strong. Right in here, Mike, you see, uh, when we ramp up uh, mm-hmm. the colors exactly. between, you know, this green right up into the red real fast, that's a sign that we could be dealing with wind damage along the leading edge of this. So let's let's take you in a little tighter here. And so uh, let's go, uh, yeah, Whitmanville, Westminster, uh, certainly uh, more than likely dealing uh, with some gusty winds right now. And mm-hmm. what we'll do is, I'll, Mike, I'll put a tracker on this for you. Yeah, and that is, that's the area we're watching. You know, it's headed over towards Fitchburg. Uh, can we take a look at that Fitchburg camera again? I, I'm just kind of curious to see what it looks like at this point. We had seen it showing uh, actually some sunshine going on. Uh, there's a tracker on it as you put the ear. See how those clouds? Look at those clouds on the horizon. You can see that steeple off there in the distance. Uh, a few moments ago, that was blue sky. Now you're starting to see that dark, ominous cloud that's sitting out there. And that is what we're seeing right here, that leading edge kind of pushing its way through. So the cloud cover is going to continue to thicken up and get darker and darker. So we'll continue to monitor this situation, keep you posted on it throughout the afternoon. There will be more severe thunderstorm warnings before the day is over. We'll go back to the news right now.